Hello everybody, welcome to the channel once again. <laughs> this is a uh, Sunday morning. Probably look a little rough, but it is Sunday morning. I've been very busy. So uh, let's get on with it. Uh, I, uh, I belong to a few, uh, you know, a few forums on, on Facebook, the photography forums. And uh, one is uh, Ilford, the Ilford, uh, Ilford Film Forum. And on there, there was some discussion about uh, Ilford 3200. I guess I can show you an open package. Ilford 3200, that is uh, being shot at uh, 1600 or 1000. One person mentioned that they shot uh, Ilford 3200 at, uh, I believe, 1600 or 1000. Uh, and uh, developed it in DDX for box speed and the results came out very close to uh, HP 5 plus 400 so that got me thinking because I, ha I had a well had I had a roll of 3200 uh, 120 inside the refrigerator and I decided you know what I'm going to take Zanzibronic uh, S2A out uh, with the uh, 75 millimeter uh, PC 2.8 uh, Nikkor lens, but I uh, there there was some mentioning that uh, you know I did research in, in different forums and stuff, and, and they were mentioning the loss of contrast. So my idea was okay, I'm going to shoot 3200. In the Bronica with the 75 millimeter f2 Nikkor lens, and then I'm going to add a two stop red filter and uh, to see if I can bring the you know, uh, I, I had no idea what the results were going to be, but experiments are fun. So out I went, and it was a bright sunny day because there people were also mentioning that. Uh, you needed uh, a lot of light. So, uh, full sun, full sun morning. I used my uh, Soligor digital uh, spot meter. So, what I ended up metering for, because first, first, first I, uh, I metered for 1600, and then I had to take into account the uh, the two more stops of light for the red filter so I ended up metering this 3200 with this red filter at 400 and uh, the results were quite surprising actually you know I love these tests so I the the I developed it at box speed in DDX uh, which is uh, you know I go through so many different films which would be nine minutes and 30 seconds in DDX. So, uh, and I also had a chance to try out this because the uh, Bronica doesn't come with a self timer. So I have this uh, vintage Japanese self timing unit to see if I could do a selfie. Uh, <laughs> it, it works really good, but when the, when the hood is on, it, there's really not enough room it kind of puts some pressure against it so I lost one frame and uh, I bought a brand new heavy-duty mini tripod about eight months ago and I can't find it in this mess anywhere because people have been moving in and out and stuff like that so uh, I ended up setting the camera just on my little shoulder bag and when the camera went off there was some movement so uh, so yeah, there'll be one uh, one frame. I'll, I'm going to show it anyways, of because uh, when I went to take the timer off, it was still cocked because it was kind of forced over to the side a bit. So when I wound the when I wound the camera to the next frame, it went off right away. Uh, 
So there was kind of one wasted frame where you're going to see it going off into wherever. And then uh, camera movement on the one where I uh, tried to do my self-portrait. I'm trying to do self-portraits in most of these videos now. The, the re that's the reason why I bought this. Uh, it, this works really well, actually. But, uh, you know, you're, it's not going to work on every application. So here are the results. 3,200. Uh, metered at 1600 and then all the way down to 400 because of the two-stop red filter to add contrast. I hope you enjoy the results. Welcome back to the channel. Slowly things are coming back together in the uh, the older studio here. There's a lot, lot, long ways to go. I got cameras on a big rolling cabinet over there, cameras in a cupboard, cameras on the table, cameras in boxes upstairs. It's a uh, <laughs> lenses everywhere and uh, oh I want to show you something I, I, I don't I don't think you uh, you guys uh, knew about this so I'm gonna show you something hold on a second inside this box so uh, over the summer I have been uh, acquiring some vintage telephoto lenses and zoom lenses for the uh, for the Nikon F system I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this but uh, here's one of them it just needs a tiny bit of cleaning inside. Uh, so th this is a, uh, so, so you'll be getting upcoming videos on this. This is the, this is the, uh, this is such a beautiful, this is a 200 to 600, 9.5, 9 9.5 uh, zoom lens. 1961 it was actually built in the same month as my birthday so it's the same age as me which is 62 years old I have a few other telephotos older Nikon telephotos I, I might have done a video with one but I've got a few over there with the uh, wow this is very heavy I've done a few over there there's an 85 to 200 and then I got the original 85 to 200 the very first one made that have to come out and have some cleaning done I think the first 85 to 200 is clean so I, there's, I've got a lot to do in the upcoming winter so uh, that was just a sneak preak sneak sneak preak that was a sneak preak <laughs> whatever that is um, I have a 50 millimeter coming and I have the, the, the which is a Nikkor lens. I have a 200 millimeter coming uh, for the Nikkor for this. So uh, that's coming. Uh, what else do I have? Oh boy, I got all kinds of stuff. So uh, we're slowly uh, we're slowly always adding to our uh, arsenal here, and uh, I'll explain kind of why why I'm leaning towards so I love the Nikon F and the Nikkor glass I have a, the Contax 2A up there and uh, Nikkor also has lenses the ones marked with a C that will go on that old rangefinder Contax which is just beautiful I have lots of accessories for that Contax almost everything you can get except for all the lenses um, but anything Nikkor, right? So, uh, so the uh, Zenza Bronica Nikkor, right? Uh, you know, they, they did make their own lenses later on, but it takes Nikkor lenses. Then the Nikon F, well, obviously Nikkor. And uh, another interesting avenue I'm beginning to look at is the telephoto lenses that were available from 400 to 1200. Now this is just future plans, future goals, 400 to 1200 that go on to the Nikon F, 
with the focusing tube that also they put out focusing tubes for those same lenses for the Bronica S2A. So uh, slowly over time we're going to get into that. So that's why you're seeing these cameras is because of their connection to Nikon, a lot of these main cameras I'm shooting. Because deep down, I'm, I, you know, I'm a Nikon man, right? It's a, it's a, I have always thought that they were, uh, once, once the war was over, uh, the World War II was over, and, uh, and you can tell that a lot of engineering ended up in Japan from uh, Voigtlander and, uh, and Zeiss and, and, uh, you can definitely tell that uh, Nikon picked that engineering up and ran with it. Is, for example, the 105, uh, you know, uh, old uh, 105 sonar lenses and and just stuff like that, and and a lot of the double gauss. They they seem to somehow mesh and meld mold into that, and then the Nikos factory that did lenses suddenly be you know became Casina and here we are we got Casina making all kinds of different lenses but also making the Voigtlanders and 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 the Tessar lenses so to me there's a deep rooted connection with the best in the world and a uh, little bit of information the Zeiss Icon pre-war was the actual largest camera manufacturer in the world so uh there's a lot of information you really don't get told in all the cloud of this is the greatest camera and this is the greatest camera. There is the, you really, really have to research and boy, sometimes it's hidden. It's a, there's, there's puzzles you have to go through and put little pieces in, but, uh, you know, the, the most celebrated cameras that you, uh, you see that everybody just, all you need to have like a, a Leica or a, or a Hasselblad, they're, uh, they're, it's, it's hype, right? Right. It's, it's, I, I've, you know, I've used, I've used the 501C and I'm totally preferring this system over a Hasselblad system any day, any day. And it's, and another big addition to it is because of the Nikkor glass. It's, uh, I have not experienced any issues with this camera. When I went out with the, uh, with the borrowed Hasselblad, there was light leak issues. There was, uh, you know, there, the, you know, timing issues, and and you know, it's, I, I, you know, you can, you can, if you wanna, yes, you probably get this big feeling that I have, you know, uh, a, a Leica or a, or a, you know, or a Hasselblad, but in the end. It's the feeling the camera gives you, the history of the camera, and the images that you prefer and that it gives you that matters. Not a name. Not a name. Not a name. And cameras are more than just uh, a shutter. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of features on different cameras that, you know, the, so the, it's, it's, it's just, you know, I just need to tell you stuff like that. It, is, you know, because I, I need you, I'm trying to get you to understand who I am and why I am and what you see. I really enjoy shooting a lot of this older glass and, uh, and older, uh, ca all these older cameras right down to the 1930s little Kodak box cameras. But before I shoot these cameras, I research, research, research to find the history. So when I go out to shoot these cameras, I'm living the history. It's a, it's the, it's, it's what really I strive for in all of this. So, uh, yes. Yeah, so I showed you the big, one of the big lenses and, uh, I got a few other ones there. And of course we all know I've got the 50 to 300, uh, which is wow. Once you, once you learn how to shoot that lens, it's just ah, it's so amazing. So I, I did a video uh, saying, let's start over. And, uh, and if you go back, uh, I'm not going to leave it. You know, you go back and have a look through my videos. The, the performance that that 50 to 300 gives 
is just amazing. It, it, and the feeling you get while you're using it, it's uh, totally amazing. And this big 200 to 600, so much history, so much history. One of the very first uh, super telephoto. So you can imagine in 1961, the, where they only made, uh, geez, the numbers were so low, I think they only made 200 a year for, uh, I can't remember how many years, but it's, uh, the numbers were so low on on those big lenses that you had to be pretty special to have one. And uh, imagine actually having a beast like this is just, uh, it's just, and the use of it is beautiful. Plus I have the close-up filter and I have a, another close-up filter for it that uh, is a Tiffin from back then. So, uh, so uh, I tried to do some close-up photos with it before and it was just, you know, you really need to have no breezes. That's for sure because you're shooting. Huh. It's a, uh, you know what? This is why. I'm going to show you why. Look at this beautiful. Look at it. Look at how beautiful this is. Look. <laughs> it's just, just amazing. The weight isn't much more than the 200 to 500 that I, I have. The, uh, you know, it has the hood. Uh, have a look at that glass. You know, there's a little bit of debris inside and a few things to deal with, but not really that much. The movement on it, the, uh, you know, it's just, <laughs> look at this thing. <laughs> you know, that's what, that's what I'm talking about. So, you know, you can, I, so I've done lots of research on the, even this lens was very lucky to get one that was in this shape for a very good price with its original wooden case. And so when I shoot that lens on the Nikon F, I'm living it. It's, it's, it's a, I'm, I'm living it and, and feeling it. And that's what all of this is about. It's not about the brand name or the, I, I need to have the absolute best. It, it's, uh, there's so much uh, hype and all that stuff. I, I'm just kind of trying to get people to sort of lean away from uh, getting caught up in all that hype. Me personally, I don't care what brand you like because photography is photography. There's many, there's many brands. Uh, so uh, I don't get caught up in the arguing that this is better, that is better. But uh, for me, uh, for me, this this Nikon, I've done a lot of history research into this uh, lenses for years, years. So uh, for me, it's Zeiss, definitely Zeiss, Voigtlander, the. Uh, and, and the Nikon stuff, it's, uh, it's, it's all to me intertwined in the end. And, uh, you know, did you know that uh, some of the, the Voigtlander Scopar, color Scopar lenses actually have three different levels of color correction in their coatings. So the, uh, the, the use of warming filters and stuff like that is not as necessary you know, that's how advanced that stuff can get. So, yeah, I don't know, whatever, right? So, uh, yeah, so that's what's coming in the future. I'm going to be talking a little bit more and more of my personal uh, personal life uh, along with it. Uh, there will be some indoor stuff coming. Uh, winter's almost here. We're about two, two weeks away from snow. It's already freezing at night. And... Uh, Oh boy, I was sick for almost two weeks. Holy smokes, that was a bad cold. Anyhow, welcome back. <laughs> I'm glad that you tuned in. Here's the 12 images. And, uh, you know, one of them is going to be a bit messed up. And uh, let me know what you think about this 3200. 
uh, shot at 1600 and well and then of course down to 400 because of the two stop uh, meter because uh, and uh, and and uh, developed in DDX at uh, box speed let me know what you think of that because I'm, telling you, I'm shocked. Patrick Hollins looked at it. Hey, Patrick, how's it going? And he was, he was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah, whole new life into this 3200 film, which uh, I'm, you know, I'm not gonna be jumping right in and buying a bunch of it. I'm a Pan F Plus guy, and uh, for a 400 film, I'm getting pretty settled on the Delta 400. Uh, the Delta 400 seems to be the 400 film that is really starting to shine through, and uh, that's about it. Oh yeah, we got a Patrick Collins found uh, found us a, uh, a film reloader, uh, so I can uh, start to buy uh, 100 foot. Uh, spools of uh, the Pan F Plus and stuff and load my own cartridges for the cost saving is, you know, quarter the cost, I'm thinking. Uh, and then I can shoot 12, you know, 24 or whatever. I don't always have to have 36 shots. See you guys later. <laughs> Thanks for coming in. <laughs> Wait till you see these photos. Hang loose, everyone.